Good afternoon, everybody. It's a very big pleasure for me uh, to be the moderator of this session. My name is Lucio Lamberti. I'm a professor of marketing at uh, Milan Polytechnic University, where I also direct uh, uh, a lab uh, using applied neuroscience for HMI. So in uh, this perspective, I am particularly eager to get to know something about uh, the very interesting topic of today's session uh, that is front loading HMI development in the automotive engineering process. We have a group of panelists that is uh, a world class group of panelists, so I will uh, surely focus uh, my attention and your attention to their interventions. Um, let's say that, uh, as Sam said at the outset of this uh, presentation, you have the Q&A section of this video call uh, that you can use uh, to take advantage for asking people. And of course, if there is time, uh, we will read uh, and ask directly these questions to the panelists of your interest. Uh, let's say that I would uh, uh, like uh, to introduce uh, our panelists uh, first, uh, and I will ask uh, uh, them uh, to introduce themselves uh, in one minute to tell us uh, what is their job, what they do, and uh, in particular their relationship with the idea of HMI. I would get started with Caterina Capraro, uh, human machine interface, a super sports car at Automobili Lamborghini. Thank you, Caterina, for joining. The floor is yours. Thank you for uh, you for invitation. I'm Caterina Capraro. I'm in Lamborghini uh, since uh, 2015, and uh, I'm responsible for uh, a human, human machine interface uh, for super sport cars development and concept. The last years, I also worked to better define and to improve the HMI a development process, the involvement of all stakeholders in the in the development. Uh, I introduced the, the use of uh, simulators to better um, evaluate the user ex experience in the cars. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much, Caterina, and thank you for joining us. Uh, next, uh, we have uh, Fabrizio Picariello, UX Ergonomics Program Manager at Maserati Stellantis Group. Uh, welcome, Federico, Fabrizio, and uh, the same question for you. Introduce yourself in the next minute. Perfect. Thank you, Lucio. Uh, I'm so happy to be there again also. And uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, I've been uh, in Maserati for uh, almost nine years uh, and uh, I, I covered the different roles inside uh, this, uh, this company. Uh, among them, uh, also the HMI responsible for this uh, brand. Now that uh, we are talking about Stellantis, uh, uh, things uh, get more global. And uh, I, I covered uh, the, the role of driving simulator responsible across the, the company. Uh, recently, I moved to the to a more uh, uh, dedicated role to the, the program manager, uh, having this uh, UX and ergonomics uh, responsibility directly on car. But uh, uh, still, I, I have something to say uh, uh, regarding the, sim the simulator, the driving simulator, and the impact that uh, th those items have on uh, the HMI. So I'm so glad to, to be there. Thank you very much, Fabrizio. And we will get back to you and uh, Caterina in a short while. We can pass uh, to Paolo Pretto, Principal Researcher, Human Factors, Resource Strategy and Driving Simulator, Virtual Vehicle Research Center. Welcome, Hello, Paolo. Everyone. Hello, everyone. Thanks for, for inviting me here. It's a pleasure, of course. Um, so I have a background in psychology and I've spent 15 years in doing basic uh, fundamental research, Max Planck Institute in Germany, uh, and trying to understand how humans perceive when they move through the environments, how they integrate the information they sense through the different senses. 2018, I joined Virtual Vehicle Research Center, which is a 300 uh, uh, researchers company located in Graz in Austria, dedicated to uh, fundamental and applied research in the field of automotive and rail. And, and where I'm responsible for uh, the topic of human factors and for the research strategy 
that we plan for our future and for our customers in terms of uh, human machine interface interactions and uh, and a concept for for future mobility let's say um thank you everyone thanks a lot paolo uh, and finally last but not least uh, we have uh, emanuele bianco a das uh, hmi expert engineer at bi grade welcome thank emanuele. you Lucia. thank you Lucia. hello everyone I am uh, Manuele Bianco. I joined the grade uh, some years ago after uh, my thesis uh, and my studies in uh, automotive engineering. Uh, currently, I'm working in uh, the grade as a driving simulator engineer uh, specialized in ADES and HMI activities. Uh, what uh, I'm doing at this moment is uh, covering uh, what is uh, the ADES uh, activities in the grade, uh, the HMI, and also let's say following also the technical support about ADAS, HMI and other products uh, like the Warsim that uh, VA grade is providing to customers. And uh, yeah, I'm also following some uh, demo activities uh, to showcase a custom solution to, to possible customers. Thank you very much, Emanuele. I would uh, immediately get started with the first question. The topic of the question will be more or less the same for all our panelists, but I will allow myself uh, to modify a little bit uh, in case uh, the discussion leads us there. I would start with Paolo, Paolo Pretto, uh, because uh, your specialization uh, in uh, the field of human factors in HMI uh, is particularly useful for me to ask you somehow to problematize uh, the idea of HMI in vehicle engineering. Uh, I would like you to provide us uh, uh, some uh, hints and some ideas about the role that HMI are getting and is getting uh, in uh, automotive engineering process. Well, thank you for your question. I'm honored to have such a such a burden, such a duty to to define the problem of HMI. It's just a, just a very small problem, right? And <laughs> so um, I think there are many different perspectives we can take, of course. And from my uh, privileged perspective of of being, let's say, uh, at the forefront of the research, so something that is, you know, um, to be able to 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 sneak preview something that will be available or on the market in, in something between five to ten years from now um, it is uh, it's not an easy an easy uh, uh, problem to, to define so HMI used to be very simple right so it's simply the definition of human machine interface but more recently uh, there has been a change even in the naming itself of HMI which doesn't mean anymore simply interface the i of hmi actually means now interaction which already gives a, a, a hint on, on on the complexity that we are dealing with so it's not anymore about uh, presenting some information and enabling the driver the user on the other side to push some button to get some uh, functions activated it's really a matter of enabling a much broader spectrum of functions and and interaction possibilities nowadays, especially uh, if we take into account the, 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 the ongoing and upcoming transformation of the automotive world right, towards more autonomy, more autonomous system, automated system, assisted systems, and so on. There are many, many different levels, right, as, as we well know. So in that case, in that context, the user, the driver is not just the person at the steering wheel. It's a person that can do a lot of things that <clears throat> until today were not even conceivable in an automotive environment. You can use the car as an office. You can use the car for relaxation. You can use the car for connecting to services and people, or you can use the car to isolate yourself and, and spend some time, uh, some, some, some quality time for yourself and with the occupants of the vehicle. So, it's it's a lot more uh, uh, um, complex, <clears throat> and that it's an interesting point because it also requires a lot more human factors considerations in that sense. Because one of the questions that I often has is hey, get is uh, but if we're getting towards automated vehicles and more and more capable of taking autonomous decisions, 
Why do we need an interface to the human? Why do we need at all to know something about the human inside? But actually, it's, it's exactly the opposite. So only now that the technology starts to be at, at in par with the humans in terms of ability to understand what's on the other side, ability to understand the needs of the user, ability to understand sense and what is going on in the environment. It's only now that we can finally initiate this much more interesting dialogue and interactions with the vehicle. Vehicle that can become in itself the interface between the interiors, between the user inside and the outside world. Thinking, for example, of, of a new sort of HMI concepts that are not only referring to the driver, but start to consider what is happening outside and start to target communication towards the outside world, like pedestrians, vulnerable, vulnerable road users, uh, other, other drivers, connected vehicles, V2X communications, CITS systems. So all this is really, I hope, helps giving an idea of the complexity of what human-machine interaction stands for uh, today. I hope it did not answer your question, but uh, in, a, in, a <laughs> in a very I provocative think, Paolo, way. You, you provided us, uh, first of all, a fundamental uh, viewpoint on the problem. Let me add uh, another viewpoint to this problem that is uh, that lies at the basis of the question that I will ask uh, Fabrizio and Caterina. Uh, that is that the cars in themselves uh, are becoming uh, more and more operating systems on wheels. And this uh, introduces uh, an emergence uh, of uh, HMI as uh, a way to fully take advantage of the features uh, and uh, characteristics uh, the vehicle have. Of course, in different in different manners and in different ways according to the kind of vehicle. And we have the advantage of uh, having a, a great expert on a super sports car like uh, Caterina and an expert uh, in uh, uh, very high end, uh, but uh, let's say more livable, let's say cars uh, such as uh, Fabrizio for Maserati. So it would be interesting uh, to understand the different viewpoints on this idea, the idea of uh, simplicity and, com and complexity, completeness and uh, features uh, and the relationship of these issues, for instance, with the vehicle dynamics uh, and the driving experience. Let's get started with Caterina. Okay, uh, yeah, mm, for us in our development in these years, uh, the big challenge in this direction is uh, to, to, to find the, the better match between the simplicity, the, the ease of use, and the complexity of uh, contents because uh, the, the world is uh, always more connected. So the driver is uh, involved in a lot of uh, um, <clears throat> input and stimulation and so on. And so in this direction, our uh, yeah, our challenge challenge is better uh, user experience to um, uh, to help the driver to be connected with the, the world and in the same time to to not distract from the uh, from the driving so i think that the better way is to uh, find a way to always better integrate the hadas with the uh, hmi systems and, and the information from navigation to to permit to the driver to 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 use the maximum of the uh, experience in uh, during driving uh, the the the, um, the emotion for driving so to 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 see the, the 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 emotional contents like widget that to show you how the car is uh, is working and so on without uh, uh, put the risk for the driver during the the the, 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 the driving so to not uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, not leave the contents for for safety, but to 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 better integrate all, all the systems to to create a good experience for the driver. This is our uh, uh, a, a, an important challenge for the future for us. I, I I fully see your point, Katarina. It's very interesting. Let me ask you another 
uh, very punctual curiosity I have because when I think about, uh, I don't know, Aventador, and I think about HMI on Aventador, I think about uh, minimalistic uh, HMI because I imagine the driver of Aventador being interested uh, in feeling uh, all the control on the vehicle, while instead, uh, for instance, uh, on uh, a sedan or an SUV like uh, Urus, for instance, uh, I could imagine that some of the features enabled by HMI are considered an answer of the driving experience. Is this uh, a, let's say, uh, basic uh, and uh, easy uh, forecast uh, by me, or is it a reality that there is also this kind of thing to take into account? Uh, there are both situations, because uh, in my opinion, uh, with the, the generation that changes, um, the, 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 the new generation are more interested also to the uh, experience related to connection and mobile phone and music, infotainment and so on. So, the new generation of drivers wants to gather the, the pleasure of driving and the, connect, the, the, the connection with, uh, with the world. Uh, for this reason, uh, in our approach, we use uh, different profiles dedicated to different kind of drivers. So uh, another really important point for, for the development is the personalization of the, the, the experience that the driver uh, want during uh, his, uh, his drive. Thank you very much, Caterina. Um, as I said to you at the outset of this question, I would have liked uh, to make a kind of a comparison between brands uh, that have uh, uh, both a high-end positioning, but quite a different one. So uh, when I think about Levante and I compare it with Aventador, I think about an HMI that is a little bit different. So Fabrizio, uh, what is your, uh, what are your two cents uh, on this topic? You're perfectly right. Um, Maserati has a, has a different uh, positioning on the market, but still uh, there are uh, similar, similar challenges. So when, when we think to the Grecale or, or the Ghibli or uh, let's say Gran Turismo models. Of course, uh, here we are speaking about sporty car, uh, luxury car, but also uh, something that is very comfortable and uh, very, very usable. So the contents are very high in number and they should be, they shall be very usable also in the interaction. Nevertheless, when we talk about uh, MC20, we are also speaking about a, a super sport car that is not exactly as a Ventador, but uh, uh, let, let's say it is more or less on the on the same line of uh, thoughts. So in in this case, we we see exactly the same point uh, that Katerina says. Uh, we are we are trying to match, of course, uh, the the simplicity of uh, an interaction, very very fresh and and direct. Uh, together with the request of uh, contents, uh, together with the request of having some uh, features that uh, are expected. I, I, I see, for example, the navigation, the maps, or I see the content, the, the entertainment. So you want to use this car to be on the track and, and enjoy yourself driving very fast, but you want also use this car at your comfort, so at your convenience. Uh, speaking about uh, more uh, mass production of, uh, that are, for example, other Stellantis brand, uh, of course, you, you are not so extreme in uh, try to find uh, the simplification, but still you have to guarantee the, the mm -hmm. highest level of usability and acceptability and, uh, of course, uh, user experience. I want to connect uh, with uh, something that um, Paolo said uh, before. He, he, he talked uh, about the HMI and the, and the change of the paradigm uh, from a human machine interface to human machine interaction. I, I appreciate it a lot. I would like to add uh, another, another little step. Now, I think uh, we, we are not only speaking about HMI, but we are speaking about user experience. 
So it is more UX because uh, it is not only the interaction, it is not only the interface, but it is a complete uh, living experience that you have uh, approaching the vehicle, entering the vehicle, interacting with the vehicle, and leaving the vehicle because you you bring some part of the vehicle with yourself and you bring some part of your life into the vehicle. So it is so hard today to speak about HMI. It is more UX. And, and that's something that uh, I think it is, uh, it is very, very uh, changed in the, in the paradigm of uh, all uh, people that develop uh, this kind of uh, theme uh, uh, within the automotive. Then mm -hmm. I, 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 if I can proceed, yes, I, I, I took a, a couple of uh, notes when when Paolo and Caterina sp spoke. So uh, another another thing that uh, I, I I think it is very very uh, game changing uh, regarding the the automotive the auto no, autonomous drive. We we, we touched the the topic uh, earlier. Um, I think you said, uh, Paola, and, and also you, Lucio, said that uh, there is the emergency for uh, an HMI uh, design in, in intervention. But uh, I think instead uh, there is uh, more um, uh, the need for uh, um, a bigger interaction between uh, the HMI experts, so UX experts uh, that are developing the um, the in interaction and uh, the artificial intelligence. I think that uh, uh, having uh, the interface that are likely to be predictive, likely to be uh, contextual, is uh, is the only way to uh, face the challenge of uh, autonomous driving, more complex environment, and the opportunity to assess and predict the intention of the drivers. That's my two cents. That's uh, that's a very interesting point, which leads me to another very, very quick question. I will ask uh, uh, Paolo, Fabrizio and Caterina and ask Emanuele to validate. That is, considering the emergent uh, importance of HMI in product engineering and in product representation, when is it uh, the right moment in product engineering uh, in which we start uh, reflecting on HMI. When, when is it the right moment uh, in the product engineering uh, in which we start, we should start wondering uh, about this point? Paolo, what do you say? David, it's always me first, huh? thank you. Yes, of course. <laughs> I, I let the I let uh, the light of the of the research to light up uh, everything for us. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, so the the but I would also like to come back to uh, also note that to what Fabrizio was 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 saying uh, was uh, during his intervention. Uh, so um, the answer to your question, Lucio, is pretty simple from my side. It's never early enough. Uh, why? Because, for example, I've been uh, recently appointed to as, as Austrian representative within the Euron Cup organization, right, to and within the working group on HMI and human factors. OK, so that means that the HMI is now considered even before any car is built because it's going to become a standard against which we validate the safety of the vehicle. So the final five star scores that we're getting from Eurocup will incorporate a certain amount of points that the, the OEMs will gather from the evaluation of the HMI and the human factors considerations within the HMI. So is that early enough? <laughs> okay. So it's uh, never too early. Fabrizio, what do you say? I, I can add uh, I can add some words to to, to Paul. Um, according to me, it is not possible to to stay in the old paradigm of uh, developing the, the HMI during the, the project development. According to me, and uh, the fact are aligning to what I'm saying, this time when you have to think about the HMI, this time when you have to, to think about the UX, is completely decoupled 
from the project. So you have to have to provide a to create a vision and you have to see and foresee for many years from now and try to build model by model this kind of vision. So uh, it is not possible to to start each project, uh, uh, let's say new bunch of features and try to develop coupling to the model. You have to de decouple these two processes and this, uh, as I said, is what it, it, it happens in, in reality. Um, and so uh, the, the question, uh, how many uh, months, uh, how many years before, it, it is it is not, not easy to answer. It, it is uh, something that you have to, to think uh, um, co continuously. And then there is another way to hook this uh, vision and this development to the model. It is thinking about uh, the FOTA. FOTA is kind of uh, uh, update uh, over the air. So firmware update, update over the air. And, and so you can uh, update uh, your experience in your model, in new model, or uh, have to the possibility to bring back uh, what you already sold. So uh, it's it's a very huge change in the paradigm, in design paradigm. That's a, a very important issue to take into account, even considering that uh, six years, seven years, that is the time uh, for developing a model very often in the automotive industry is uh, an era. <laughs> shorter. <laughs> shorter, <laughs> come on. Uh, uh, it's getting uh, maybe shorter in some companies. Uh, we are still talking about six years or seven years from the conceptualization to the first sale. And uh, actually, six or seven years or even five years are an era in terms of uh, interaction, in terms of standards and things like this. Katerina, when uh, when is it the right moment? Do you agree with the idea that it is never too early? I totally agree with uh, Paolo and Fabrizio. I think that the uh, the, the, the user experience uh, should be the, the the start of the ideas of the of the new cars and the new project. The whole approach to the cars was uh, we define all the contents and uh, all the function, and then uh, um, the HMI developer uh, uh, to find the the better way to to show these contents and to interact with these. Uh, I think that the, the new vision should be we start from the user experience also because uh, the, the, now the main future of the cars are uh, in my opinion uh, uh, user experience and vehicle dynamics uh, for, for for our target for super sport car maybe so the 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 the, the project should start the, from the user experience uh, starting from the wish uh, of the customers regarding the user experience. Uh, starting from here, the contents should be uh, the, 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 the next steps. So uh, the wish of the of the user is to have, uh, I don't know, to see the sky during the, the driving. And so we find the, ca the, the function to the, 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 the function that to permit to the to the customer to, to do it. Um, and for this reason, also in uh, in our new um, uh, user experience process, our approach to have a continuous uh, um, improvement of uh, HMI. So during uh, the project, uh, the, the the project uh, zero, the first project. Every every um, every new new request or new content have to be the starting point for the future project. Uh, so uh, uh, this is uh, is, to, is to be the, a continuous uh, improvement process, and there is not a really starting point to define the user experience for one car. It should be a continuous process, in my opinion. Uh, only in this way we can. Uh, try to guarantee the best experience uh, to the to, to the customers. Thank you very much, Katerina. Uh, let me go to Emanuele uh, to ask him uh, if uh, these inputs about the relevance of HMI 
is translated uh, also in an effort for uh, using uh, simulation as a, a way to foresee the impacts uh, of HMI and how HMI can be developed. What is your experience uh, and the experience of the A-grade in this regard, Emanuele? Absolutely. Uh, simulation, and in particular driving simulator, are very, very useful for HMI studies. In particular, let's say, if, you, if we talk about only simulation in which the human is not in, on the loop, let's say offline simulation, maybe those simulations are less uh, useful for pure uh, interaction, as we, we told before, because there is no human in the loop that cannot uh, directly interact uh, during the driving. In driving simulator, instead, you have a real human that is feeling, uh, that is driving, uh, for example, on a dynamic platform, uh, you you feel that your brain is feeling that is driving and so the hmi the interaction with the car with the, on one side uh, let's say when, on the classic side with the vehicle dynamics so with uh, i don't know uh, traction control uh, uh, abs uh, and so on uh, on the other side, uh, we have uh, new challenges, for example, ADAS controllers uh, like uh, adaptive cruise control, uh, emergency brake and so on that uh, are needed to be studied on the driving simulator because uh, we need to know not only the reaction of the car with respect to an emergency maneuver, but only also the, uh, let's say, the uh, reaction of the human driver to what uh, the car is doing. Uh, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm not uh, the only one that is thinking uh, driving a car uh, when uh, something happens on the steering wheel and saying what is happening and was just uh, lane keeping, for example. And I'm not aware of it because the HMI of that particular car is not uh, uh, making me aware of, uh, the, of the intervention. For example, in, uh, let's say, in our case of VA grade, what we are providing for HMI studies uh, is uh, the VA dashboard product, uh, in which uh, we thought that is, uh, it could be very useful to bring uh, the testing phase of uh, the HMI, for example, touch screen or cluster, whatever image, um, from uh, what is now, so from a physical, let's say, from a physical uh, testing to a virtual testing, just after, in, let's say, in the workflow, just after the uh, production of uh, uh, images, of uh, Photoshop images, let's, let's call it like this. Thank you very much, Emanuele. Um, meanwhile, I encourage, uh, I further encourage uh, the audience uh, to ask their question in the Q&A session, uh, because we will have some time at the end of uh, the panel to discuss about them, and uh, I'm pretty sure that you will be able to generate questions that are much more interesting than mine. I would like to focus uh, our attention uh, now on uh, uh, the future of front loading HMI in uh, engineering process. That is, uh, I would like to ask uh, to each of our panelists uh, to tell me a challenge uh, a very specific challenge that, according to them, uh, represents uh, the, let's say, possible future for this uh, kind of uh, an issue that is uh, making HMI more and more central in uh, the vehicle engineering. If we have to uh, point out uh, a challenge uh, that, according to you, is particularly relevant, Fabrizio, what would you say? Oh, now it's uh, it's my turn to <laughs> to break the ice. <laughs> you know, by oh. definition, somebody must be the first and somebody must be the last. <laughs> oh, um, it is very difficult to de define the challenge. Uh, I, I see more, more, more probably uh, a group of challenge, but uh, let's uh, let's organize the discussion. Um, I think that uh, the main challenge. Uh, will be in the UX HMI, will be to define a very, very predictive interface, a predictive interaction. Um, I think that uh, uh, create a very complex uh, interface is very easy. It is not so easy to create a very simple interaction. So 
the, the great challenge is to simplify and be predictive and of course adaptive. Uh, so to do so, uh, I think uh, I already touched uh, very briefly before this, uh, this discussion, but I think that uh, many, many uh, specialists, many professionals should concentrate in the translation of what, uh, what is coming from uh, the big data uh, and uh, data science uh, from that uh, very, very rich aspect uh, to the uh, creation of uh, algorithms that are able to anticipate and simplify the life of the people inside the, the car. That will change uh, the, completely the, the, the position of the driver uh, regarding the, the interface. That, that is a kind of bridging the gap uh, that is the machine that come closer, the human and not the, the vice versa. So it is not the human adapting to the machine. It is the machine that is able, and now it is very, very able to do so, that is approaching to the human and simplify his life. Uh, that's, that's according to me, the main challenge. Um, then uh, it is not the only one, of course. Um, regarding the, the driving simulator, I think uh, one of the, of the specific challenge that is parallel to that one is to use it to um, have the opportunity to tune the, the performances of the, the adaptive uh, and, uh, and of course the uh, ADAS systems uh, in order to be more and more sure that we have to uh, concentrate only on, on the comfort zone of the inter interaction and not only on the um, uh, arbitrate, arbitration of uh, the control between the driver that should have the, the control and the machine that should have the, the control, because this is, according to me, the trickiest part. Uh, driving simulator can help in two ways, according to me. First of all, in the fine uh, and 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 uh, raffinate this this kind of algorithm, and uh, on the other uh, other hand, help in uh, uh, promote the um, willingness to offset these uh, this kind of uh, systems because it is not so easy to to see the steering wheel that turns alone and be there and see the, the road or other vehicles in the road approaching and, and stay calm. It is an, a complete new paradigm. We are not so, um, uh, we are not so ready to, to, to face that. So it is something that a uh, driving simulator can help. Thank performance and acceptance, according to me. Performance and acceptance, very good including uh, uh, the typical issue of human factors uh, with uh, artificial intelligence uh, and the balance between the two. Caterina, what about you? What is uh, the thing uh, that according to you is uh, the big challenge in HMI front loading? I will return, return uh, on, my, on my concept, of, in my opinion, in my vision, the, 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 the challenge in the in the HMI development uh, is to totally reduce or to remove or cancel the risk related to the driver distraction. That is the same, in other words, the, the make easy, more easy the, the interaction. But uh, uh, as for our cars, the autonomous driving is not not a good idea because uh, we are uh, really oriented to the to the driving. Uh, the real challenge is to, to, to cancel the, the, the negative effect uh, of uh, driver distraction. Cancelling uh, driver distraction leads uh, us uh, to a point. I will take advantage once again of the position as a researcher uh, of Paolo. Um, basically, I, I have uh, uncertain ideas about how to get to the good uh, HMI. That is, uh, generally speaking, one can think, uh, okay, I find the direction and I incrementally make it better and better and better 
also thanks uh, to testing, to simulation and things like this. On the other hand, you can think of uh, uh, the fact that sometimes in order to have even a small advantage in HMI, you have to revert everything. So according, according uh, to your perspective, Paolo, uh, is uh, the improvement of HMI uh, more incremental as a process, a waterfall process, or is it more a trial and error and so a kind of uh, generation of scenarios uh, issue? Very, very interesting question, Lucio. I think that um, from my experience and from what is see happening, there is a certain load of incremental steps, but you need from time to time some disruptive innovation. Hmm? And uh, I think that uh, now there are a few ideas around in, in, in the community of, of UX uh, and, 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 and HMI experts um, that are actually starting to seriously address the challenges that both Fabrizio, uh, Caterina and also Manuela has, has mentioned before. So the first thing I try when I get a new car, I try, I, I, I'm driving around and then I search for how to deactivate this uh, uh, lane centering system. Hmm? This, is, uh, 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 this requires some uh, uh, disruptive change. Hmm? So we, we cannot build incrementally here because the technology is as good as it gets. And we can smooth certain reactions of the vehicle dynamics, we can tune here and there, but I mean, uh, come on, let's be serious, right? The way we drive is much better. I mean, the way each of us drive compared to our own metrics is always much better. So um, th this really uh, uh, calls for some disruptive innovation. And I would like to, uh, because I take the chance of being this time uh, uh, the, the last uh, 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 talking that I also took some notes and um, I duly did my homework. So and I would like to address some of uh, interesting points that came up uh, during this discussion uh, so far. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, Fabrizio, you mentioned uh, one of the challenges trying to be able to predict and to uh, the, 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 like to, to forecast the interaction, to forecast what are the needs. Now, what, what is the so we need a very good driver monitoring system. We need to be able to, able to be able to understand what's the driver state, state in a very broad sense, not just a physical uh, posture, right? But really the mental state. What's the available attentive resources, uh, uh, Katarina, right? That, so how can we minimize the intrusion to the to to, to the brain of the driver? with complex and, and overly uh, overloading interfaces and functions. We have hundreds, thousands of possibilities, but what's the best way to tune it to the actual driver state and to the actual ability of the driver to receive the information, to receive the warning, to receive the indication on what to do next and how to do next. Which brings me to uh, another uh, uh, point that I Think is very interesting that I briefly mentioned before. We start now thinking of integrating and coordinating internal uh, HMI to external HMI. External HMI is a very open, unexplored, wide field. Right? There, is, there are no regulations or very little that are more related to uh, light uh, system and, 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 and so on. But uh, this is the, the next challenge even for vehicles that uh, 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 privilege, of course, the driver contact for like high super uh, performance cars, there will still be the possibility of having some level of assistance and some uncertainty from the pedestrian side, from the other road user side on what is going on inside that vehicle, who is in control? Is it the vehicle? Is it the uh, other system? Is it the driver? And what's the engagement of the driver in the current driving task? Is the driver paying attention or not? So uh, uh, um, addressing the communication and interaction to the outside is, in my opinion, another I guess uh, we lost your uh, your mic, isn't it? Of customizing interfaces, and any brand, of course, is is willing to do so because any brand is trying to carry uh, the, the the values, the the emotional load that the brand has, and to communicate it to their own customers, right? So, but uh, on one side, the customer has the freedom to change model, to upgrade the model, and to even change the brand. 
But if we have too many customized and hyper-tuned and very different interfaces, what we risk is that on, 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 a, bigger, on a bigger vision, on, on a on longer term, to induce confusion, to induce disorientation on, on our drivers. So we need to take care of that as well. There need to be a certain level of, of a common understanding for basic functions, especially for safety related functions. And then we can go wild with the design and the customization for other aspects that are more related to comfort, entertainment, and, and, and things like that. Uh, I mean, this is, I mean, also a, a provocative and my personal point of view, but probably the reason why we're here is because we are supposed to some expert in the field. So I hope that I'm somehow also representing other opinions in line with mine by, by saying that. Last but not least, uh, and I would like to address what uh, Katarina uh, said before, new HMI, new user experience concepts allow us to tutor the drivers. So the driver of a, a super high performance car is very often uh, uh, more older than younger, let's say, and very often not a skilled driver, not a particularly skilled driver. It's just a driver that is more wealthy than the average, but no one is born a professional driver, right? So the, 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 the possibility of understanding what the driver state is, what the driver skills are. So the, the feedback that we can record and process with artificial intelligence algorithm allow us to profile the driver, to understand what's the level of the driver. And then we can use the interface <clears throat> to create a tutoring program, a customized, personalized tutoring program that support and assist the driver, specifically that, that driver, until the driver is up to speed with the best uh, efficiency and the best uh, satisfaction in using the system. Um, for all of these functions and all these challenges, I believe, and I think that uh, many people share my belief, that driving simulators are the absolutely essential tool that cannot be substituted because all this testing, all this still understanding that we need to develop and all these directions and challenges are only possible when we have a driver in the loop in a safe environment that is extremely flexible and that can allow us to experiment freely in many directions. Thank you very much, Paolo. Mm, let's say that uh, one of the things that emerged uh, from your very interesting contributions, uh, Fabrizio, Caterina and Paolo, is the fact that uh, somehow the HMI design within product engineering is uh, a kind of, uh, let's say, never-ending story that uh, evolves continuously, that uh, uh, depends on the context, uh, depends on the technology development. And uh, of course, uh, simulation and user testing are of the essence, uh, especially because uh, sometimes we need uh, to uh, be radical in our innovation instead of being incremental. And this leads me to a topic, you know, uh, that is uh, the fact that sometimes uh, developing the wrong HMI uh, can be very difficult uh, just because, uh, uh, I mean, you don't put on a street and on a road uh, a car with a bad uh, HMI. But uh, sometimes uh, from wrong things, uh, the right ideas can come. So, so the only problem is that if I do these kind of things on the street, there is the risk of uh, generating an accident, you know. So this is why, for instance, virtual reality and mixed reality probably are getting momentum in this kind of thing. And in this regard, I would ask uh, Emanuele to uh, since uh, probably the debate on virtual reality for this kind of modeling uh, has been uh, overinflated in the last uh, time, uh, I would like you to focus on mixed reality, even because uh, I know that uh, VA Grade has developed uh, an ad hoc solution for this kind of uh, situation and scenario. Yeah, yeah. Currently, we are developing some prototype of uh, mixed reality. Uh, for simulation and for driving simulator. So basically this, this kind of technology, we see it as a, let's say, 
next step for driving simulator in which uh, you basically replace everything that is uh, real like the cockpit on a driving simulator so like a real physical car that you can touch it with the portion of virtual uh, car virtual interiors virtual interiors means that one can switch uh, between one uh, interior to another very easily without let's say doing uh, physical uh, hardware stuff with this uh, we can also merge uh, with the mixed reality also the mm, possibility for the driver to interact also with the physical stuff like the steering wheel because obviously you cannot uh, let's say do a steering wheel uh, in the in a complete virtual reality you have to touch it you have to feel it both uh, the steering wheel or even the dashboard in case one needed the dashboard and uh, in this uh, for this particular application we are developing it's under development, it's not yet a product, a complete product, but we have uh, this uh, kind of uh, very prototype that uh, if, if you want to, we have a small, uh, small, a brief video that we can show. It is based on the uh, virtual reality technology by Vario. Uh, this is a, 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 a cockpit that we have developed for, uh, for prototype in which uh, Everything that is green basically is replaced by the virtual reality. So by the in, re, by the virtual interiors, while everything that is not like the steering wheel or the dashboard in these cases, it's uh, virtual directly inside the, the driver view. Here it is the driver on a dynamic platform, so with uh, also with motions. And uh, here is basically what the, the driver can see. So in the mix of reality, you can see its hand, you can see the steering wheel, uh, pedals, and so on. And all the rest is uh, replaced by virtual uh, virtual interiors. The advantage of this solution is the real immersive uh, immersiveness uh, of the driver inside the the inside the scene. So he can see really every portion of the of the virtual interiors uh, from uh, uh, let's say dashboard, uh, passenger seat, for example, and so on. It's a very interesting thing because uh, probably uh, these kind of approaches uh, are a possible, let's say, solution for the question I asked to Paolo. That is, is it better to be incremental or radical? Um, I guess that this kind of technologies uh, can potentially make uh, the cost of being radical a little bit uh, more under control, uh, which is uh, not at all, uh, not at all uh, trivial. I have, uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank all the panelists uh, uh, for the inspiring and insightful contribution to the discussion. We have some questions uh, from uh, the audience and I thank uh, uh, whoever asked. Uh, I have, uh, for instance, a question by Sebastian. Uh, thanks for your interesting uh, discussion. Would you say that your described principles apply to drivers in different means of transportation or is it deliberately related to passenger cars? So do they, this principle apply also to motorcycles, trucks, uh, bus uh, or things like this? Who wants uh, to answer? I can take the, the yes, question. Please. Go for uh, I should say the, the main focus is, uh, of course, on passenger car, sports car, and it's why and it's because me and Katarina are there, but also Paolo spoke. And uh, general idea is that the the interaction has the same rules for for transportation. So 
uh, minimizing the driving distraction is is true for passenger car, but it's true also for other transportation uh, vehicles. Um, potentially, the, um, there are different applications. For example, I see very, very few applications of a, uh, autonomous driving in, in, a, in, a, in a motorbike, for example, but uh, the interaction with, uh, with a simplified and adaptive and proactive, let's say, interface is uh, truly uh, applicable for uh, a passenger car to a passenger car or motorcycle and very, very easily to other um, vehicles. That's, uh, that's my point. Uh, there is, uh, um, let's say, another question, and I thank you Fabrizio for providing uh, this uh, very punctual uh, reply. Um, I would ask uh, something uh, that was asked uh, by Costa Argemiro. Uh, that is, uh, what will be the relationship in the future between uh, driving simulation and proving ground tests? That is, uh, uh, let's say, when we go from simulation to real uh, experimentation. I don't know if... Uh, uh, Paolo, Caterina or Emanuele want to provide us uh, some insight about this topic. I'm not sure I can answer directly this answer, but I still want to add two more cents to previous answer uh, by, by Fabrizio. We have actually done some experience and also published some work in some scientific journals about uh, implementing this sort of adaptive interfaces also even for cyclists. Hmm? Because, of course, uh, uh, it's all about how do you provide an information to, to the cyclist in this case that is not distracting the person and that is helping actually the person. And one way that we found effective is to use multi-sensory uh, communication, right? So instead of doing just a visual warning, which is very difficult to do for, for a cyclist unless the cyclist is wearing a head-mounted head see-through display, which is also possible, but you can use vibrations of, of, for example, smartwatches, or you can use auditory stimulation, so you can use head, head, earplugs. So these sort of uh, uh, concepts for, for uh, interactions and, and, and safe and comfortable interactions apply, in my opinion, to all different type of road users. Um, now coming to the uh, question between simulation and, and, uh, and uh, proving ground, well, I think that uh, uh, still uh, both are, are definitely necessary, in my opinion, because of course, in the in the and, and complementary in 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 a, in a, in, a, in an iterative way, because there are uh, situations that you can only find out when you are on the road, and even in a proving ground is probably one step, but the real road is is another different level, right? So. You need still this sort of testing, this sort of uh, uh, experimentation, and then you can go back into the driving simulator, and then you can uh, chirurgically, surgically, sorry, uh, 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 dissect the problem and analyze the specific issues and find specific solutions. But again, the implementation needs to go back into the real world at some point and face the complexity and the variety of the conditions and stimulation of the real world. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, let's say that uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, let's say, other questions from the audience. Uh, I will uh, try to ask uh, uh, most of them uh, if I can, uh, but I'm asking you also to provide very quick replies to this very punctual question. One question asked by Nick uh, is about uh, the frequency range of concern for battery electric vehicle noise and vibration. Uh, I would uh, extend a little bit uh, the concept. Uh, so far we talk about HMI. Uh, what is the role uh, that sound engineering and the haptic uh, issues uh, and factors uh, uh, play in simulation? I can give uh, my point of view. Um, according to me, the, the sound uh, and the BEV uh, is, uh, is a very central topic uh, uh, in, in terms of user experiences. Uh, so, 
uh, I can I can um, <laughs> share with you the experience in Maserati. Uh, we we launched uh, a very punctual uh, uh, activity of research last years. Uh, since uh, we are moving to um, um, very very fast to the BEV, uh, and uh, the sound uh, in terms of communication, in terms of uh, uh, vehicle for the multimodality interaction is internal and external is. Uh, very, very central. Uh, it, it means to study it uh, in, in terms of uh, um, technical development, of course, uh, and also human factor point of view. Um, and I think this um, th this will lead uh, to a uh, new paradigm of interaction regarding this. Also touching what Paolo says regarding the external communication. Thank you very much, Fabrizio. Let me conclude with a question uh, uh, that uh, uh, if uh, Katerina uh, wants, uh, uh, I would ask her. Um, it is the question by Marvin who asks, uh, um, basically is uh, HMI, you, you, you stressed a lot on the idea of uh, distraction or contrasting distraction as a main goal of uh, HMI. Uh, his question was this one, what is the trade-off? What is the balance? between uh, aesthetics in HMI and safety in HMI. That is, uh, uh, can we compromise on aesthetics uh, in order to contrast distraction or is it better or it is better a very effective anti-distraction system that is not the most beautiful one? Of course, uh, I'm, talking, uh, I'm talking more, let's say, technically than ethically, because there is also an ethical implication that is uh, very important, Katerina. And I will, I, I will, uh, the, the question is not easy, so I take the easier part that is the technical part. Yeah, in fact, uh, my, my, my first response is that uh, it's, not, it's really not easy to define what is the, the, better, the better match. Um, I think that... Um, <laughs> It's really hard. <laughs> um, I think that for cars, for for the mission of the car safety, had to be always the the, the first, uh, the the first, uh, the, the more important things. Um, is that the reason? Because for, I consider a big challenge to to find uh, the better match because. Uh, the user experience and, and in my opinion also the integration between uh, HMI and ADAS uh, had to be the way to, to, to find the better safety uh, situation without, uh, uh, without uh, decrease the, the, the contents and the design and the uh, emotions. Thank I don't much. have an answer. No, no, no. Yeah. But I guess I guess nobody has an answer, and I guess that the question uh, the question is very very interesting. Also for this reason, probably it is a part of the overall uh, product engineering strategy to find the right balance between the yeah. two things. And so, as a result, uh, the answer is uh, as it often happened to a marketing oh. professional like I am. It depends. Yeah, and, depends. And, uh, yeah, it's like asking if you have to take a meal. If you prefer to see a beautiful dish or a very good tasty dish, it is not a question. You you want to to see something that is good and very tasty. So yeah. the point is to to provide the the more beautiful uh, inter interface with a with a very very high performance. That's that's the point. Well, thank you very so much like to to add my simple. my small uh, answer to that. First of all, thanks for this very provocative question. But the answer, I, I tend to agree with, with, with my with my conversation about this here. That uh, I mean, it's you you don't really uh, have an answer for that because you don't need to. At some point, when it comes to an emergency, when it comes to critical safety event, it's not about aesthetics. So the problem stops to apply uh, at the time it becomes a safety related issue. Uh, the, the, the user experience, the HMI design applies 
from a safe level onwards, right? To the completely pl pleasure, leisure, entertainment, uh, and so on. So the safety and the, the emergency situations are out of the scope of what is, let's say, essentially considered like the, the user experience design. Thank you very much, Paolo. Let's say that for being a group of Italians uh, speaking about uh, cars, uh, being just five minutes late on the schedule uh, is uh, a great accomplishment. So <laughs> we are very, very proud of it. I uh, hence uh, thank, uh, in conclusion, Caterina Capraro, Human Machine Interface Super Sport Car Automobili Lamborghini, Fabrizio Picariello, UX Ergonomics Program Manager at Maserati Stellantis Group, Paolo Pretto, Principal Researcher, Human Factor Research Strategy and Driving Simulator, Virtual Vehicle Research Center. And finally, Emanuele Bianco, ADAS uh, HMI Expert Engineer at VA Grade. I do thank you for your very fruitful and very constructive and insightful uh, arguments during the panel. I thank uh, everybody who asked questions and also those who haven't asked the question uh, for remaining uh, uh, with us uh, up to this point. And I thank the iGrade for inviting me to uh, moderate this very, very inspiring panel. Thank you very much and have a nice uh, continuation of your day. Thank you, Lucio Lamberti, for your great moderation and the possibility to have all of us in these comfortable uh, settings. Thank, Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.